campus this morning, we could just feel the spirit. We just feel it. We thank God for the opportunity to come and serve and worship him in truth and in spirit today. Uh, we're now going to have a song from the Royal Ensemble Choir. So let's give them a hand. Scripture says, I will bless the Lord at all times. So if you know this song, just help us sing it.
All right, right here, we're going to repeat it. Well, say I will. Say I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. And all times, I will bless. I will bless the Lord. continuously be in my mouth and in yours because that's what it's all about giving him the praise because it's due because he did it for us over 2,000 years ago on the cross now I don't know about y'all but I'm excited about that alone amen I will bless the Lord at all times let us all stand for the call to worship let us look unto him, Lord. To look unto him is to turn from everything and all issues at hand. Yes. Father, we come today. We come because no other help we know than you, Father. Father, we don't come boastfully or braggadocious, but we come humble. Because we know that you hold the key to our future. And that would be our salvation, Father, eternal. Father, touch each and every one of us this morning under the sound of your voice. Father, there are many out there in the world that are, are suffering. They're hurting from, and some are sweating from the heat of injustice. But I pray that you rain down on them, Father, and let them know that you're God and besides you there's none other. Father, touch this house. Touch Royal Chapel. Build them up where they're torn down. Father, if there are any cracks in the seams, we pray that you bind them up. Yes. And Father, if there's one that just doesn't know you in their pardon of their sins, we pray that your word falls on fertile ground on them, that they too may be come to a point of acceptance of you. And Father, when all is done, we pray that they will have a home yes, in your kingdom where they can spend eternity serving God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these and all other things we ask and we receive and make our petitions to you. And let us all say, Amen. 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 The scripture today is going to be coming from a familiar text. I told you guys I'm a gospel preacher. I love the gospel. The good news. And it's going to be coming from Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 1 through 14. Matthew, the 22nd, verses 1 through 14. And I have the NLT version that we're going to be coming from. And let us all stand for the reading and reverence to him. And it reads thusly. Jesus also told them other parables, he said. The kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to notify those who were invited, but they all refused to come. So he sent other servants to tell them, the feast has been prepared. The bull has been fattened. I mean, the bull and the fattened cow have been killed, and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. 
But the guests he had invited ignored them and went their own way and on, their, on his farm and another on his, to his business. Others seized his messenger and insulted him, insulted them and killed them. <clears throat> the king was furious and he sent out his army to destroy the murderers and burn their town. And he said to his servant, the wedding feast is ready and the guest is invited aren't worthy of the honor. Now go out to the streets, corners, and invite everyone you see. So the servant brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike, and the banquet hall was filled with guests. But the king came in to meet the guests, and he noticed a man that wasn't wearing the proper clothing attire, uh, clothing for the wedding. Friend, he asked, how is it that you are here without the wedding clothes? But the man had no reply. Then the king said to his aides, bind his hands and, his, and feet and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Many are called, but few are chosen. And I've entitled the, the lesson today, The Chosen Ones. The Chosen Ones. Amen. Amen. The announcements are short today. I'm, I'm going to let, I mean, correction, call on Deacon Stanley to it late on uh, the event that we have coming up. Amen. But uh, one thing I want to touch on is uh, the COVID issue. It's still on the rise, but uh, we're looking at it from, instead of state to state now, we're looking at county to county. The, the, this is kind of an uptick. But we're going to be about our father's business here at Royal Chapel and ensure the safety of everyone. Amen. 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 And also there was, uh, the, the class was held. Yesterday, was it, Deacon? Yes, yes, I'll let you uh, in light on that because I'm late coming in on that. But other than that, we want everyone to be safe because we're going to work on some security measures in the future, near future. We haven't gotten them ironclad yet, but we've been talking about them. Hopefully, we get things situated. All right, now we are now here from Deacon Stanley. Let's give this great man of God a hand as he comes forward. Good morning, church. Good morning. It is very, uh, it is a blessing to see everyone alive and well this morning. And we just thank God that we still above the ground and we're able to see each other and able Amen. to tell each other that we love each other. So that's a blessing in itself. Amen. So we just glad to be here. There was a class held yesterday, a gun class held at the Judy Memorial Center yesterday and it uh, I think it went out way up from what I heard, you know, so I think uh, uh, Brother Gary Henry sponsored that through the Judy Center, so, uh, 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 you know, uh, it went out well, and we just thank God for everything concerning that. And also, uh, we don't want you to forget the pastor's installation service coming up this coming Sunday. And it's going to be at 3 o'clock, but members are to be here at 2 o'clock. So you can be in place. We want members here at 2 o'clock. No, don't wait for 10 minutes to 3 because we, uh, we want all members in place. And I think we have decided that all members will be sitting on this side of the church, which is my right side. So there's a part that we got to have to play. And... Uh, we are looking for multitudes of people. We will probably have an overflow, and the overflow will be in the uh, Federal Hall. We want the big screen to be on over there so they can do the service, the ones that can't get in the church. And the church will be feeding. Uh, uh, we have already contacted the caterer. The caterer will be uh, the sensation of our wallet, and I'm correct. Sensation from Wallace will be doing the cater, and as you know, they have good food, so uh, we're looking for a glorious time, 
and, uh, and this is a great service, and we are installing a pastor in this church, and, Amen. Amen. and, and, and we just hope that, that we have many years together. Amen. Uh, That's the first person uh, in our pastoral church. Uh, search. He is the first person that me and him uh, interact with each other just like uh, David and Jonathan. You know, All right, now, they're right. so familiar right. together. Right. So, uh, so uh, he he's a man of God, and he preached he preached the God. And you can't go to sleep on him because. He always got something. If you look like you're good to sleep, he got something to wake you up. So he <laughs> has a story. He has a story that he can tell you. Watch out, watch out. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and I guarantee you, that story will be so interesting if you can apply it to your life. So Amen. it's always a message in it. So I thank God for our paths crossing. So we, we want everyone next Sunday to support him, members especially. Yes, support our uh, new pastor. Yes, show him that we want to be fed. We want to hear from heaven. And Amen. you know what? If your pastor's got a, a help through God, direct your life, the way you live. So, uh, uh, so we want to show up in the place next uh, next Sunday evening. Now, there won't be a morning service. So, so just, you know, get up, just pray, talk to God, and get yourself ready and be out here at 2 o'clock. And I got a thank you call from uh, Sister Lillian Ives. You know, they had that, that drive-through birthday celebration for her last weekend. Amen. You know, that's a wonderful thing to do. Yeah. Amen. That is a wonderful thing to do. Somebody that have been on this earth a, a, long, a long eight and 90 years, they deserve, yeah, they deserve that. Amen. I understand how old was she? she was that's a blessing. A lot of people don't see nine. But if you are able to, to, to see your ninetieth birthday, thank God for that. Just give God all the glory. Oh, the glory for that. And, and her card, it reads like this. She said, in our busy world, each good thought, word, and act makes a difference. Each good thought, word, and act makes a difference. In more ways than you know that the difference you make for me, thank you, comes with Miss Lillian and I. Mm -hmm. So we just thank her for sending a thank you card. And we all know who, uh, uh, what you've done. We all know who done it. So uh, she's thanking you and said that you made a difference in her, in her life. Amen. Amen. And we're so glad to see this choir this morning. Thank you, Deacon Stanley, for those words. Thank you. I tell you, I know I don't know if um, you know you guys were out of town, so I had the key to the city while you guys were gone. Yeah. <laughs> I went down, and and my wife and I we. Part, partake, part two, I want to make sure I'm, and, and we went down with uh, Sister Lillian and, and her family, and it was like I was at home again. Yeah. It's like I was at home. Beautiful group of people, I was down there snapping pictures with her and, and the family out there, and, and man, they had the grill fired up, we were, we were eating, and, and we, were, we were supposed to, and my wife, we were supposed to go there and look just go in, drop the card off, and, and keep getting up. No, that didn't happen. <laughs> I think we didn't get out until, what was it, about 4.30? <laughs> about 4.30 when we got out there. And, and I was, you know, I guess I was the loudest guy out there. We were having a ball. You thought I was one of the children or something. <laughs> but that's me. I'm a people's person. I, I, don't, I don't meet strangers. If, if you don't like uh, Michael McKinley, 
slim chance of you making it in. I don't, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. Come on. <laughs> you got to love me. Rep, my, my pastor, my former pastor, he's passed on to glory. Uh, Reverend Ford used to say, you can't make it to heaven unless you love me. And say, if you don't believe me, you die and try. Yeah, yeah, sir. And let's give this royal ensemble another thing. Aren't they beautiful? Boy, I tell you. We will now have another song by them, and then we'll go into the word. Amen. Amen. God. 
God is good. Oh, yes, he is. God is good. How many know he's good? God is good. Didn't he wake you up this morning? God is good. Oh, yes, he is. God is good. Oh, yes, he is. God is good. Hey, hey. All righty. Brought me out of darkness. Put food on my table. On my feet, save my soul. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Amen. Boy, I tell you, you the Royal Ensemble put it down this morning. Okay, that does it. We can go home. The sermon has been preached. It's been preached. That, that, that was it. God is good. I tell you, I, 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 I don't even know where to start now. You know, that reminds me of back in the day. Um, back in my day, you know, when they didn't have the music in the church. All they had was some old guy over there with a washboard. And they had pots and stuff they would bang on. They didn't even have drum set. And, and, and the windows were raised. Well, let me, I'm, wait a minute, I'm politically incorrect now. The windows was heist. <laughs> and you could, the windows were up, and they continued to serve God without the perfections that we have today. They served him. Our ancestors knew how to do it. And, he, and God continues to do it for us today. Yes, he does. He continues yes, he does. to do it today. I tell you. Okay, I'm calm down now. I'm, 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 get, get to the left. Amen. Amen. My goodness. Amen. Now that's what I'm talking. Matthew, the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they told the same story, but just from four different points of view. And when you break it down, Luke had a more in-depth because of his profession. He was a, a physician. But I'm going to break it down for Matthew today. And um, Matthew, he pretty, gives a pretty good depiction of what happened here. And I've, like I said, I've entitled it The Chosen Ones. The Chosen Ones. And we're going to get a little clear understanding how I came with that title. How the Holy Spirit laid it on my heart to give it that title. When we get into the lesson here. Now this is a parable. This is a parable told by Jesus. What is a parable? A parable is a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. And we use map, their metaphors and different instances throughout the Bible that gives examples. So Jesus uses metaphors because the upper echelon thought they had it going on and they just couldn't really understand uh, the profound truth. So he broke it down so that a child could understand it. So in this parable that Jesus is speaking to the religious leaders of Israel, today we have to ask ourselves, we have to ask ourselves, how does this apply to us today? This same parable that Jesus is speaking of. How does it apply to our everyday living today? Verses 1 and 2 is in reference to the invitation. It says, uh, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story that, of this parable that is told of a wedding feast that is prepared, the king has prepared for his son, his son's wedding feast. 
The banquet was ready, and he sent the servants to notify those who were invited, but they refused to come. Now, has anybody ever had a party set up and then it was everything was set and then the members just didn't show up? Amen. Or when they did show up, they showed up late. Uh-huh. You know, and, and you know, it kind of gets cuts you to the skin. But there's a point here to this parable that Jesus is telling. Now he instructed his men to go out and then his servants to go out and invite them. And they went about their everyday living and turned their backs on it. That's the same thing that's happening in the church today. Amen. The pastors are coming. They, we are the servants that are just going to give the word. But some people will find it other things to do. They, they'd rather go to Walmart and buy a new TV. Go ahead, preach. Or go to Lowe's and, and pick up that lumber. Says, well, I'm off today, and I, I'll put God on the back burner because I got an ox in the ditch. I got to go and get it done. We're all guilty of it, that the clergy as well as the members. We're all guilty. We put Christ on the back burner sometimes. But there's a lesson to be learned from putting God last. You got to put him first. We always got to put God first in everything. When we wake up in the morning, our mind should be on him, giving him thanks for making it through the night as we slumber in the very image of death. And and we we got to give honor to him for that. Now in um, verses 5, it says, they went about their everyday activity. But in 6, they crossed the line. They killed the messenger. They killed the messenger. That happens today. In some of our countries overseas, they don't want anything to do with Christianity, and they kill them when they come. When the missionaries go, they, remember the missionaries they caught? What is it, Haiti? They had them hemmed up down there, and now they, they, they finally got them back, I think. But they're being killed today. But even in the United States, they're killing them with their tongue. They're killing the messengers with their tongues. Some of us would go down to the church and say, well, you know, uh, uh, Reverend so-and-so, he was a little too long today. Yeah, and I, I, I saw him, you know, he left out of here, he went to the grocery store, and, and I don't know who that lady was he was talking to, but he, he couldn't have been talking about the Bible that long, and we're killing them with our tongues. We, we sometimes pull our leaders down. We Amen. need to pray for them. Pray for our leaders. Build them up. Don't pull them down. That's what's happening here in this parable. Jesus is giving a perfect example that even in 2022, we can apply it today and understand where it's coming from. It's very clear. If we open our spiritual eyes, it's very clear. Now, in verse 7 and 8, there was a reaction from the king. It says, and he said to the servant, the wedding feast is ready and the guests invited aren't worthy of honor. He says, now go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. That's what it's all about today. We we don't care who you are. Come. Come. Invite them. Now the church is for believers, but if a non-believer comes in, we're going to try to reach them. We're going to try to win them over. We can't save them. We win them over and God does the saving. God will save them. Some of them say, well, I I like Dr. Barkin was preaching the other week. I was listening to him on the radio. He says, ain't no need us going down to the church. They ain't down there talking about nothing but Jesus again. What what do you think they're going to be talking about? We're trying to save somebody. Get them saved, brother. We're trying to win them over. We're about our father's business. And it doesn't stop here. It, when we enter those doors, when, when we enter them, we come in to build ourselves up as believers, edifying the body of Christ, because each one of us are members of the body of Christ. But when we exit those doors, that's when it goes to work. Don't just take it home and sit on it and say, and, and say it was a good sermon. Put feet to it. Sooner or later, you're going to talk with somebody, and you'll be able to... Uh, Give them the word, but thus says the Lord. 
Maybe you can help somebody. And like I've said it many times in sermons in the past. There have been too many times that I've gone to funerals and, I, and, I, and I, I, the Holy Spirit convicted me. I wish that I would have said something to him. Maybe I could have reached that one. Maybe, Maybe but it's too late then. And, and we don't know. We don't know if that person got it together before that point in time. We don't know. That's why I can honestly say I can't tell you anybody in here is going to heaven except me. And you can't tell anybody in here going to heaven except for you. It's a personal relationship that we have with Christ. It's personal. I can say 99.9, .9, I can believe that you're going. But there's always that 1%. I don't know it all. Amen. Only you know. I know 100% that I'm going because of what the word says. And you know 100% that you're going because of what the word says. When we're believers, we stand on the unadulterated word of Christ and hold these truths to be self-evident in and of itself. Amen. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Take it as it is. Amen. Amen. Now, verse 7 and 8 down there was a reaction, like I said. Now, in verse 9, it says that the invitation was for anyone to come. Anyone. In the beginning, it was the Jews first. But then we, the Gentiles, the Gentiles are anybody other than a Jew. We are grafted in, so we have the same authority that they had. The same authority. There's nothing different. So when somebody says, well, you know the Jews are God's people, we're God's people too. Amen. We have been grafted in. Amen. It's a done deal. So don't, God has no respect to person. There's no one that is higher than the other. No respect to person. Now let's look at verse 9 again. It says, go out and invite them all. That's the way it happens in the church. That's how membership grows. You invite somebody. When you're talking with your friends, well, you know, if you're not going anywhere, come, come with me Sunday. Or, or come on with us Wednesday night, Bible study. Let's hey. break the word. Extend that invitation. Just extend it. Just like Jesus says in the parable here. This is a perfect illustration of what heaven, how heaven works. And we're going to get down to the rubber on the road in just a second here. Great day. I'm so excited with this message today. Great, I might not jump and run 90 miles an hour, but I'm going to slow down just enough so you can get on board. Amen. Amen. Now, in verse 10, it says the servants brought anyone they could find, good or bad. This is in the parable, good or bad. It doesn't matter. God has no respect to person. And verse 11. Let's see what it says. it says. But when the king came in to meet the guest, he noticed that a man was not wearing the pop, proper clothing. What was the proper clothing? In the parable, they were issued gowns to wear at the wedding feast. But how does that apply to us today, you say? In the end time, the gown that we should be wearing is salvation. Where we accepted Christ. Amen. So it's a perfect example. We're not getting into heaven if we don't have the gown of salvation on. Yes. We must exercise free will and accept it. Yes. This is how it works. This illustration here, this parable is telling that it's going to come a time when there are going to be many that stand before him and say, um, didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I prophesy in your name? He gonna, he's going to say, depart from me, you worshiper of iniquity, which means lawlessness. I never knew you. Now, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about royal chapel. I'm just talking about somebody else, okay? Because you guys got it together. Man, if you got it together, give, give him a hand clap of play. It's a done deal. It's blessed assurance. You are sure of your salvation. And if you're not, we got to get it together. You got to put that gown on. So that when you stand before him, you have that salvation. Amen. Blessed assurance. Amen. 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 But in 13, verse 13, judgment was passed. What does it say? 
It says, then the king said to his aides, bind his hands and his feet and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gashing of teeth. Does that sound familiar? That is what's going to happen at the great white throne. And you don't want to be standing at the great white throne. This is what happens to the ones that doesn't have that gown of salvation on. When it comes down to it, when you get down to the end and the rubber hits the road, you've got to have your salvation intact. That's the only unforgivable sin. That is several blasphemings, but blaspheming the Holy Spirit by not accepting him before you expire. Amen. It is too late. When the preacher stands over your ashes, the ashes, dust to dust, that's it. That's it. That's the truth. There's nothing more that can be said. There's nothing that can be done. I know our Catholic brothers say that you can purge them out of purgatory. There's no such thing as purgatory. It's hell. And remember, we talked about the three sections of hell. Paradise, which was where Abraham was with the, the uh, uh, Lazarus in his bosom. The place of torment, which was where the unbelievers went in the Old Testament. And the lake of fire. Okay, enough on the three sections of hell. Amen. Amen. We must ask ourselves. Are we the chosen ones? And it states right here, it says, For many are called, but few are chosen. Few are, who are the called first? The called are the ones that come. And they sit in the pews. Or the ones that hear the word on the radio. The ones that hear it from their brother man that is speaking to. Those are the called. Because it's, it's, it's a, a verse here I want to read that, that breaks that down more clearly than I can even say. In John 15, 16, and it states, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. So we don't choose to be saved. God chooses to save us. But we must exercise free will to accept it. This is how it's done. You don't just wake up one morning and you're laying in your bed and say, well, I'm going to go get saved today. It doesn't work that way. you got to hear the word first. How can you hear it except you have a preacher? Amen. Breaking it down, giving it to you. Or the Holy Spirit instilling it in someone to speak to you. We hear it on the radios. It's everywhere. It's all around us. Some people say the word is not being preached anymore. But I beg to differ. It is. The word is going out. Amen. Even if it's a, a preacher that doesn't have it together because a busted clock is right twice a day. Amen. It's right twice a day. So we're going to get the word. God said he'll take a crooked stick. And draw a straight line. Oh, yes, it will. So yes, don't worry about these old crooked leaders that come out and, you know, turn them over to God. Let God have them. Amen. Let, Amen. let God, God will separate the, the terrier of the wheat That's and the barley. Amen. He will separate them. So we're not to be concerned about it. And then, then it's an, um, you know, some people would think they can outsmart God. They'll come up and say, well, you know, um, you know, uh, many are called. I heard that before. Many are called, but few are chosen. So how do we know that you were called? How do we know that you were chosen? i give an example. I love, I love the Facebook chatter. I, I, I got this from Facebook chatter. There was a zoo. It's another story here. There was a zoo. The star attraction in the zoo was the gorilla. Everybody came for miles around to see that gorilla. But the gorilla was sick. And they knew they were going to lose a lot of money. So they had one of the guys dress up in a gorilla suit. And he was so good at it, he went out and, and he was swinging on the cages, jumping around, beating his chest. But he got a little cocky and 
fell into the lion's den. The biggest lion they had, he was another star act. They, everybody came to see that lion. That lion, the, the gorilla fell and went to screaming, somebody save me, save me from this lion. The lion leaned over, will you shut your mouth before you get both of us fired? <laughs> so you don't know the real thing. So these people at the zoo, they see these actors portrayed. Just like we have preachers in the pulpit. They're putting on acts and portraying. But we must pray for spiritual discernment so we'll know the real thing. Amen. Satan knows the word just as good as, better than I do. Amen. My God, he got kicked out of heaven. He was there. He was there. Yes, he, he was there. He knew the word. And don't think he's got on a red suit with a tail. Don't look for that. Satan I intend to put that in the office in there. Rev. Boy had it in his office, had a mirror up there that says, don't look, you just might see the devil. <laughs> so, so Satan doesn't have a pitchfork and a long tail, okay? That's just some fable myth that they came up with. So are we to call? Are we to call? That's what it's all about today. If we're the call, then we are going to be the chosen with the exorcism of free will. I mean, the exercise of free will. Just accept him. And all you need is a smidgen of faith. He's, what did he say, a mustard seed? A mustard seed of faith is all it takes. I don't know about you, but I've got my feet on the solid rock. And I'm accepting Christ. And I'm not adding to this word. I'm not going to subtract from it because my help comes from nothing more than Jesus Christ that died over 2,000 years ago on the cross. So on Christ, the solid rock, I'm going to stand because all other ground is sinking sand. I love the song Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. My goodness. Isn't that beautiful? That's it. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. A hand clap of praise. Because that, that message, that message, it, it was telling the parable, but it applies to us today. It applies to us today. I don't know about you. But I'm ready. I'm not going to be ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? If you're not ready, as the soft music plays, let us look into him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the words that came today. We pray that they fall on fertile ground, Father. We pray that you, the members of your body will go out and take the word, share it with someone, so that they too can partake in eternal life, Father. I have the chance at it. But Father, we thank you first, most of all, for what your son did over 2,000 years ago on the cross for each and every one of us, that we may have the right to eternal life. And if there's one out there today that haven't received Christ in the pardon of your sins, if you want to be the chosen, if you want to have the gown of faith and salvation and not be thrown into the dark uttermost abyss, this is time to get it right today. If you're not saved in the pardon of your sins, let them come at this time. Amen. Just come. Just as it says in the parable. Let them all come, good or bad. Let them come. If there's one. If there's one that'd like to join this, this great church. Amen. If there's one out there that would love to join this church, we would be happy to have you. Amen. The deacon is here. We're all here to receive you and, and show you the way guide you the way that God would have you to be guided. Not our way, but his way. 
if you're watching by way of social media, if you're watching and you're not saved in the part of your sins, just repeat these words. Just say, Father, I have sinned. I have fallen short. Save me from the wrath that is to come. And I'll be forevermore careful to give you the praise. For I know that your son, Jesus Christ, died and was buried and resurrected over 2,000 years ago, paid the price for me. And I ask you to save me, Father. And if you prayed that prayer, just believe what you prayed. That's the free will when you believe it. Then you can put on that gown of salvation. You don't want to be at the wedding without it. Because Jesus is coming back for his bride, the church. He's coming back. And we want to have on the gown. We want the gown. Let us all give him a hand clap. Of Amen. Let's um, prepare to go into communion. Before we go into communion, let's um, let's go ahead and do the offering, please. Amen. Let us all stand. All things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own, as we give of thee. when we come to give it to him. Amen. We give him back. Amen. He owns it all. He just has given us stewardship. Yes, That's all we have, just stewardship. He owns it all. Now, you know, this, this sacrament that we're about to partake, this is when you get it. If you have anything that you need to clear or make clear with, with, with the Lord, you do it now before you do it. Get it out of the way. Whisper it to him. All right. We're ready. Everybody ready? Okay. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 34, it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye drink, as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body of the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drank of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you and may sleep. For if we should judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when, it, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. 
Wherefore, my brethren, where ye come, when ye come together to eat, tarry one another, tarry one for another. And if any man hungers, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. 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 So the bread, which represents the body. Father, we pray that you bless this bread, that it edifies the body of Christ, and we do it in remembrance of you, and everybody in unity is together. The wine, which represents the spilled blood of Christ over 2,000 years ago, we bless it as we take it all together in unity. Amen. 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 And when they did so, they went off into the hills and the, the olives and stuff, but we're not going to leave just yet because we got a few more things. Amen. Amen. All right. We are about our Father's business. Let's give him a hand, clap, and pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We're at that part of the service today that we recognize any visitors that we have in the house. Amen. Any visitors? I see one of my brothers back there. I'm not going to call him up. He might be a little shy. I don't know. I see one of my brothers back there. Uh, if, if you don't mind just standing so we can recognize him. Amen. Amen. Anything you'd like to say, brother, before you sit down? Amen. Amen. Anyway, uh, we, we, we were neighbors. We used to live right down the street from each other. He still lives down by my daughter. And, and we have one more, but before we go to him, um, um, I know him by his nickname all his life, but I want his, 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 his uh, God-given name. Yes, William. I knew his name. I don't know why I forgot it. Okay. And uh, we have another visitor today. Yes, sir. And your name, brother? Trayvon? Okay. It's nice to have you, work, you both of you guys worshiping with us today. Is, is there anything you'd like to say before you have a seat, brother? Amen. Amen. Well... You, you visitors today, you feel comfortable to share and partake with us anytime in the future. Amen. Anytime you feel like coming, come. Amen. Remember the banquet hall. He went out, he called them in. That's what the sermon was about today. We, we issued the, the plea for them all to come That's and true. partake. Yeah. You never know. You may end up being um, a member of this house, one of you, you know, one day. You never know. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's, that's how it starts. One tells one, one tells another, and another tells the other. Amen. I would just like to say before we close that I really enjoyed you guys today. You listened very attentively. Nobody went to sleep but one person. I'm not going to point him out. <laughs> I'm not going to give him a hard time, but I'll get him when we get to swimming pool again. Yes, sir. That's what it's all about. Down here at Royal Chapel, we are royalty. And we're royalty when we leave here. And what about the royal ensemble? Boy, I tell you. You know what? I don't know how to act now. I don't know how to act. Y'all know what y'all done and done. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Those women are back. You know what, man? Men, don't y'all get too easy. We might have a male corps sometime in the future. You never know. Don't, don't set too easy. Yes, sir. I've been doggone. We're going to let these women outdo us. We ain't going to do it. 
But you know, I must say this before we go, though. I, I got embarrassed down here. I must confess. I got embarrassed. I opened, I put my foot in my mouth. I was getting ready to pick on the men. I, I told all the men in the church to stand and, and, and you know, and we were going to show, uh, show the women how the women outdid them. And, and it was about 50-50 that day. I was, my God, the, the men showed up at Royal Chapel. Now that says a lot. You know, because I, that's another sermon. I'm getting into that later. We're doing Bible study. It's another sermon. All right, having all hearts and minds, let us all stand for the benediction. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we leave this institution today, yes, the campus, Lord. we pray that everyone has their hearts right. They came in better than when they leave. Let them not leave the same, Father. They came in and they were edifying the body of Christ together. We build up and we impart truth. And we go out to the streets, the highways and byways, and we share it with one another. And Father, those that wanted to come today but could not make it, Father, we pray to touch them right where they are. And let them know, Father, that you're still in charge. And as we leave this place, we pray that you give them safe passage back to their appointed destinations, Father. All these and others we ask and we pray in the spirit, through your son, to you, in his holy name, we all say, Amen. Amen.